Hello! If you recognize all of this, welcome back to my ongoing athletic corset series. Or, if you're new here, welcome friend, come on in and take a seat. Today I shift from researching these garments to making them. And that process of course starts with mock-ups, and I plan on taking you with me through the process of redesigning my existing 1890s corset pattern into something that more closely resembles a sports corset, and then through the mock-up fitting and alteration process. So I have these pattern pieces, based on an 1890s corset pattern from the Simington collection that already fits me. But before we get into modifying those into an athletic corset, I first need to decide which features I want to include in it. I went over the list of most common features of athletic corsets in my previous two videos. If you haven't seen them yet, and you like corsets and primary sources, go check them out. But to go into a little bit more detail here, I'll do a quick rundown of the various features of historical athletic corsets that I could choose to include. It could have a shortened or completely truncated torso, giving the hips and legs a larger range of motion. It could have entire sections made out of elastic, probably either a full side panel or simply elastic hip gores. It should probably have shoulder straps, and those could be adjustable with either buttons or elastic straps. I could include laces on the hips if I desire, and I could replace the busk in the front with a strip of buttons. And I probably should go easy on the boning, as historically these corsets had few bones or no bones, with cording and strategic seam management providing some of the structure of the garment. So that's a long list of the possible features I could include, and in deciding which elements will make the cut for my version, I have to take three things into consideration here. First of all, what activity I will be using this corset for. I think this is probably a good starting point for any corset making endeavor, but it is extra valid in my case as the goal is to construct a corset that I will be able to perform in. I am a professional circus artist and performer. My sole source of income for the past decade has been performing acrobatics on stage in front of audiences all over the world, and so in constructing this corset I need to keep in mind the wide range of movement I would like to be able to achieve as well as the safety of its construction. Secondly, I need to keep in mind the overarching purpose of this challenge. I am making this corset as part of the Tube collaboration Corsetry in Motion, and the entire aim of this challenge is to demonstrate that, in the past, corsets were not the device of restraint and torture that much of the general public today seems to think they were. Don't know where they got that idea. <gasps> I don't- Suck it! Can't breathe! Myself. Now, boom. With this in mind, I would like to construct a corset that still resembles a more classic historical garment, and so I think that some of the extremely short versions that basically resemble a boned sports bra would lessen the effectiveness of our message. And lastly, I should consider what extant garments and primary sources I have access to when trying to recreate one. While I could take all of these various features and make a blind amalgamation of my own invention and still probably call it a sports corset, I personally much more enjoy the challenge of trying to reproduce an existing garment as closely as possible. This of course creates an interesting balance between historical fidelity and practical requirements, and it's a fine line I will be walking, trying to stay as true as possible to the original garment while also creating something that will be safe and comfortable for me to perform in. So which garment exactly will I be trying to reproduce? Well, the most obvious example, and the one I have the best access to, would be a Ferris Goodsense waist, because there seem to be the largest number of these surviving. Not only have I found a few examples on auction sites, but I was also lucky enough to get a first-hand zoom tour of a Goodsense waist in the private collection of Marion McNeely. Marion is a clothing historian and researcher, and was editor of Foundations Revealed for nearly a decade. She is the author of Corset Cutting and Making, the revised edition, which is an annotated reprint of a rare 1920s corset book that many of you may recognize, and that at least a few other costumers here have in their bookshelves. She also has several athletic corsets in her collection, and was generous enough to spend some time giving me a good up-close and almost personal look at them. This first-hand access, together with the many patents I found granted to the Ferris brothers, and the numerous images found in advertising of the time, make this garment an ideal candidate for a reproduction. So, with this in mind, what features does that leave us with? 
Well, I think right away we can get rid of a super short torso reproduction. Skeptics of the corset will be tempted to say, But that isn't even really a corset. Plus, I haven't found any versions of a ferris waist that was this short. I think for the sake of mobility, I will keep the side elastic panels that we see on the ferris cycling waist, because I like the level of literal flexibility that gives me. The shoulder straps here are adjustable with a button and multiple button holes, so I'll probably keep that system over, say, an elastic strap. Some of these models have laces on the hips, perhaps to allow for more size adjustability. They can be loosened when the wearer needs a bit more room and mobility. However, as I will have the elastic on the sides, I think the laces would just create bulk and perhaps also an unpleasant pressure point, so we're going to leave those off. The buttons on the front were a key feature of the Good Sense waists, and one that I am most keen to reproduce, so they are certainly staying, and we will take a good look at the patented design for these as I reconstruct them in my next video. And lastly is the issue of boning, cording, or some other means of stiffening this corset. Many of these corsets advertised their reduced amount of boning, some had no boning at all, and some had removable bones. By eliminating the busk in the front, I am a bit afraid that this corset might just shrink in on itself and collapse into a puddle of wrinkles, which I can't foresee being particularly comfortable, so I do want to keep some of the bones and supplement them with loads of cording as we see in the original models. So with all that done, let's go put on my 1890s corset to see what modifications we'll need to do. Ta-da! Uh, yeah, look at that. That is a uh, one heck of a look, right? Obviously, this is not a historical option. This is one that I was planning to use for an event that got canceled due to COVID, but it is almost exactly the same pattern that I would use for my historical 1890s corset. I um, simply modified it, obviously, to make the tuxedo front. The busk and everything is the same length. It's it, virtually identical to the pattern for my 1890s corset. So I'm thinking that the bottom here could use a little bit of a trim. Like if I just go actually straight across here because on the hips, it's fine. This length here is pretty good right above the hips on the side. So I think if I just cut it straight across, that that should take care of that. And um, because I won't have a busk here, I can just make it whatever length that I want to make it. Also, I'm going to take these straps and center them a bit more because obviously here they're going to a um, halter top sort of neck, so they had to be scooted out a bit more. But I think for the athletic version, we're going to take these straps and center them a bit more because they're going to go straight up and over my back. So the angle on that needs to be changed a little bit. And then looking at the back, the back actually looks pretty good. Obviously, I've laced this one quite loose because I just threw it on for a quick trial. Uh, in reality, it should be, you know, laced a little bit tighter, like so. Again, it dips down a little bit here. So I think I'm just going to, again, cut it basically straight across. I will have a look at the extant version and see what exactly the lines do on that. The height on the top here looks good. Just need to add those straps. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good. And I think I just need to shorten the front and the back so that it's all kind of level straight across and then readjust the angle on those shoulder straps. But essentially, I think I can use virtually the same pattern with very few modifications, which is... But first, a quick range of motion test. So, with those changes in mind, let's look at the pattern pieces I used to create that corset and see how to apply the desired modifications. Here, I've got the original fashion corset pattern in dark blue, which is a modified version of this Symington pattern from the 1890s, and below that is the pattern from my first mock-up. 
First off, you might notice that it's very colorful, and that's because I've marked in my seams and my boning and cording channels. This helps me mentally compare my pattern to the original ferrous waist, trying to match the placement of the cording and the division of the pattern pieces as closely as possible. These are just roughly marked for the moment to make sure that I remember they're there. Once I do a test to see how I want to insert the cording, then I'll worry more exactly where they'll go and how wide they'll be. The cording is in pink, welted seams are in blue, and boning is in black. You can see that I haven't changed the number of panels yet, but I have redistributed the width of it. For instance, based on the extant example, panel number 2 should be a little more narrow, so I first drawn a line marking where I want the new edge of this panel to fall, and I will transfer all of this excess, roughly 3 centimeters, over to the corresponding edge of panel number 3. This is a fairly straightforward transfer, so let's look at a more complicated modification involving the addition of the elastic section. I thought about doing elastic strips like we see in the advertising for the Ferris bicycle waist, but I thought it would give a more even tension and a smoother look under my costume if I used an entire panel of elastic, so I had to figure out how to add that in. I didn't want to cut an elaborate curvy shape out of the elastic, so instead I looked at the panels where the elastic would have to fall, panels number 3 and 4, and I decided to take a rectangular chunk out right in the middle. I chose a spot on panel number 4, drew a line where I wanted to add the elastic in, and then completely guessed on a proper width for that elastic. In this case, roughly 7 centimeters. I drew a second line 7 centimeters away from the first line, continuing straight up past the edge of panel number 4 in order to use this offcut to get an idea of how much fabric I should then subtract from panel 3. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and having tried to write this section of the script multiple times I'd have to agree, so please just watch my process of determining how much I need to take off of panel 3 in order to account for the elastic I've added in. I shouldn't forget to actually make up a pattern for that panel of elastic even though it's a simple rectangle 7cm wide by the height of the corset at that point. This little corner down here was orphaned by the addition of the elastic, and so the same transfer process was done in order to add it on to panel number 3. The other changes were fairly small and straightforward. I changed the angle at the bottom front to be a bit less severe, but I actually added a bit of height to the top because when I went back and looked at the photos of the extant corsets, they actually have a quite rounded, curvy shape over the bosom here that I didn't remember, so I tried to imitate that. The back was mostly kept the same, just getting a little trim to the bottom at the center back. With all of these changes mapped out, it's time to go make a mock-up and see how it fits. Alright, so here we are in my ever so echoey bathroom and we're trying on mock-up number one. This is what it's looking like. In general, I am pretty pleased with the fit. Um, the only problem that I am having is that there is a little bit too much extra room in my boob cups. Uh, and I was a bit confused because that was not originally a problem in the first, uh, but the original 1890s pattern. And then I realized that actually that problem gets solved if I pull in the front here, like if I just these two panels get closer together, that solves a lot of the gaping issues. So I think what I need to do is I just need to actually scoot it so that these two middle panels overlap a bit more. Um, I'm pretty happy with this line over the top. I think I'm just going to make it a little bit smoother on this panel here. The elastic is working pretty well. I'm happy with that. And then if we look in the back, we can see that there is a bit of a little gap going on here, but I think that's because I don't have any um, boning or cording in here and also once I have the straps going over the shoulders that should help fix that because the whole back will be held a bit uh, straighter. Also there is zero lacing gap at the moment so I think I need to trim maybe take off a tiny bit off of the back. So let's go put on some straps and try and get that piece figured out and uh, yeah go make some alterations to the pattern. But that's not what happened at all. Instead, I continued to fuss and fiddle, eventually deciding to add the rest of the bones and a shoulder strap to see if that changed anything at all, and in hopes that that would magically fix the situation and prevent me from having to do a second mock-up. It didn't. It did, however, greatly improve the structure of the rest of the corset, which just confirmed my thoughts about the torso fitting pretty well and the bust being the area that needed the most focus. 
All right, so I have good news and I have bad news. <laughs> and the good news is that I've figured out what the problem was, why I had so much room in the bust area of that first mock-up. And the bad news is that it's just because I'm a prize idiot. So what happened, as I had showed you before, was that on panel number two, I have this whole section over here that was marked to move over to panel number three because that was the way that it more resembled the extant garment. But because I wanted to film this for you guys, uh, I never actually cut this section off. So when I went ahead and cut out all of my pieces to make that first mock-up, uh, I had this roughly three centimeter portion on both panels. Like I didn't just transfer it over from two to three. I just copied it, which definitely explains why I had so much room. So the good news is that this should be a fairly easy solution to fix. I could just chop off all of this panel, all of this excess here, except the thing was that actually the first mock-up fit me very nicely in the rest of the torso. It was just mostly the bust area that had too much room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate almost all of this three centimeters here on the top, but then I'm going to taper it down so that this longer stem section down here still has a good chunk of that width. Let's go make uh, new pattern pieces uh, taking into account uh, that extra three centimeters. So I gave panel number two a stern talking to and a severe trim. I also decided to smooth out the curves along all the bust pieces while I was at it because some of those lines were a bit harsh and not conducive to a smooth bust shape. I also wanted to increase the lacing gap a bit because it was, well, it wasn't, and that's probably due to the stretch of the elastic panel. I'd like a gap of maybe two to three centimeters, so I'll shave a centimeter off of the elastic strip and I'll trim a bit off of the back panel as well. I'll also work on patterning a proper shoulder strap. Among the extant examples that I was looking at, there were a few different versions of the Good Sense waist, but they all have a joint somewhere on the back of the bodice where it's joined to a separate piece for the shoulder strap. This was almost definitely for economy of fabric to allow for less waste in the cutting process. And while this version is absolutely gorgeous, it's also far longer in the torso and on the back than what I'm going for. Ferris waists were often advertised as coming in various lengths, long, short, or medium, and this is clearly of the longer variety, whereas I am very much of the shorter variety. So as much as I prefer the elegant lines of this version, I think I should model my back to look a little more like this version. So this is version number two of the pattern, and it's time to go make mock-up number two. All right, guys, I am back in the echo chamber, and uh, I think this is the one. It is looking very nice. Um, please excuse the fact that I apparently can't do basic math and uh, screwed up my button placement, but other than that, it is looking fantastic, and I am super happy about it. Um, I have all of the boning in there. I don't have any of the cording, so it will only get a little bit stiffer, which is great. I've gone ahead and marked out where these straps are falling when they are comfortably adjusted. And I think that's actually the only thing that I'm really concerned about in making major adjustments is just with the back. They are winging off of my back a little bit, like no matter how I put them there's always a little bit of wonkiness going on and that's just because there's no elastic in there and yet my shoulders are a very mobile part of my body. So maybe we'll throw a little bit of elastic in there for the actual real thing. We can see that I have a proper lacing gap in the back here. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, there is a little bit of unevenness going on down here, but that will be easy enough to fix when I uh, do my final pattern adjustments. I think I will still maybe try and bump this line up even a little bit more underneath this shoulder strap here. It is looking nice, but I think it could go up even a smidge more. So I think I will give it a tiny bit more on the final pattern and then I can always cut it down right before I put the binding on. So, um, I think we just need to go make some teeny tiny changes to the last pattern and we are there. I am so excited. So 
I decided that it was time to copy the patterns into their final form, because I find it much easier to trace stiffer patterns. Panel 1 was further broken down into two pieces to accommodate the extra welt seam in the extant corset. I added even a bit more height to the tops of panels 1 and 2, and I finalized the width of the button panels in the front. Lastly, after walking all my seams, which is simply measuring both sides of the same seam to make sure they are the same length, I adjusted the heights of panels 3 and 4, and then I was done. So there is a bit of insight into both my design process, as well as my pattern redesigning and mock-up modification process. I know that because I was starting from a pattern that already fit me, it was a fairly smooth process, which is great from my standpoint, but if you're here looking for a hardcore alteration tutorial, you might be disappointed and will probably have clicked away at this point. But hopefully, if you're still here, you picked up at least one tidbit that you can carry with you in your sewing journey. I think my biggest tip to you from this video would be to make new pattern pieces rather than constantly modifying the old ones, especially if you have a lot of changes or if those changes are quite large. If something isn't working, I can always retrace my steps and see my alterations, ditching the most recent changes and restarting from an older version of the pattern. And clearly labeling the changes you made can help you to remember and identify what exactly you changed and sometimes, like in my case, can help you to identify the precise facepalm moment of the process. Tune in next time for the best part, the construction and reveal of the final product, which I am so excited to get started on. If you haven't watched the previous corset videos, you can find them in this playlist. And if you are in the mood for some history bounding content, go check out my H&M Goes Edwardian shirt flip over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.